morning, but we welcome into the studio now here at uh, Bake More Pies in Tampa from Rue Restaurant here in Tampa, Chef Ricky P. Welcome back, sir. How are you? I'm doing very, very well, except the Saints lost last night. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, but they lost to the Falcons. Well, that's even worse. <laughs> I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry that that happened, but I'm a weird, I'm, a, I'm kind of an Atlanta Falcons fan. See, I'm born and raised here in the state of Florida. Of, of course, you, we got a guest, and the first thing I do is turn it on, on me. Uh, let's talk more about. We got a new. We got a guest in the studio. Let's turn it uh, on. Fit you know. Make it uh, uh, turn it on me. So, um, uh, but Matt Bryant. Do you remember Matt Bryant? Oh yeah, he was the absolutely. kicker for the Bucks, yeah. and I got to know him and his wife, his family, when they were here in Tampa. Uh, we became friends, and uh, and so I, I'm a I'm a weird fan. I guess I guess technically on the spectrum on the lower end because mm-hmm. you know fan is short for fanatical. True. And as a kid and as a young adult, I was a fanatical fan when it came to sports. But then as I got a little older, I was realizing how much of it controlled my emotions. And I couldn't take it anymore. Yep. So that being said, I don't have this uh, us versus the world kind of mentality where I got to root for my right. team and right. this and this and this. Right. Uh, so I root. I want Matt Bryant to win a Super Bowl. I would love for him to win a Super Bowl. And last night, I'm sorry uh, that it was his kick. That, it, uh, was. it was. It was his, his field kick. goal that. Na- put the put the nail in the cof- coffin. So well, I I truly believe that the the Bucks have never been quite the same since they lost Matt Bryant. If they I hadn't agree. if they hadn't lost him, they would have been going through all these kicking woes that have cost them games. Yep. You know, so uh, I'm a Matt Matt Bryant fan too. And the fact that he's 42 years old, and I'm I'm above that line in terms of age. That uh, so I'm 43 kinda, somewhere like that. 44 is probably closer. But uh, it uh, it's great to see you know guys like him that he's a good guy and he's he's still doing well he's still kicking it uh, yeah no yes, pun he intended. Is. <laughs> well welcome into the studio man uh, thank, you. thank you for stopping by I was we were joking around earlier that if you show up here without food you know, we weren't going to let you in <laughs> but but you know uh, wait mate, I, can't, I don't know if we can do it today but I really would love to one day you know after the show maybe just next week is to come over where you guys are sure you know come over to Root uh, you guys open up at eleven o'clock. 11 is uh, when we open for lunch. Yep. And a uh, new lunch mem- menu for those of you that are familiar with Rue and didn't know about a month ago. Yep. Uh, November 1st. November 1st. You yep. guys started. All uh, Saints Day. And is the, is the oh yeah, appropriate. <laughs> yes. Um, is the lunch menu the same as the dinner menu? No. Okay. Uh, we've added uh, uh, more uh, po' boy sandwiches than the, lunch, than the dinner menu. And we've constricted some of the options, mainly because it's it's a matter of of turning lunch faster. You know, people don't have time to to sit and dine and wait for appetizers and all of that. So we've we've streamlined it. Tell me about the po boys in the menu. Well, you know, there's there's so many. I mean, you know, the the concept of a of a of a real New Orleans po boy is whatever you've got left in the kitchen goes on French bread and. Throw some mayonnaise, oh, really? lettuce, and tomato. Yeah, you can put anything on a po' boy okay. sandwich. So. Okay, I didn't know the origins of the po' boy. Yeah. So, so okay, so that's so like a poor boy. Like, you know, you're just taking whatever's left over, throw it on a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the uh, the whole thing was back, you know, the sandwich was invented during the, the Depression, and uh, some guys were on strike and uh, r- across from this restaurant called uh, Martin Brothers, and they didn't have any money to uh, pay for, for dinner, so the brothers said, you know what, let's take the leftover French bread and we'll make some sandwiches for those poor boys that don't have any money. Huh. And so that's how the origin of the, of the sandwich came about. And it became so popular because um, good New Orleans French bread is crusty on the outside and fluffy in the middle. Mm-hmm. You throw mayonnaise and gravy and meat or seafood in it and you've got yourself... All of the three important ingredients of a of a meal, which is uh, carbohydrates, a protein, and, and a little fat in the mayonnaise. It's perfect. And um, and it's, there you go. It's a complete meal. Johnny, isn't the uh, Cuban? Doesn't the Cuban sandwich have a similar origin story? Uh, that it was, you know, the lower income workers are trying to have. You know, it's a, it's a very cheap sandwich. Yeah, but- and uh, and it stays. You know, it stays fresh, like you know, throughout the day. It's not gonna, you know, really kind of. Um, you know, it doesn't have, with the exception of the Tampa version, the Miami version doesn't have the lettuce tomato like the Tampa version does. And it's it's because it's, it's, it would stay fresh throughout the day without the lettuce and tomato. I thought the lettuce and tomato was a later addition to the Cuban sandwich. 
the original Cuban sandwich did not have lettuce and tomato. That's probably right. right. Okay. Yeah, and uh, but, and I don't I don't know why he went to turn to Johnny for this. I guess because he's a, he's span he's Hispanic. It's not like you have a head chef sitting right next to you or anything. Yeah, he's Colombian, so I'm like, oh, let me go ask him about anything that has to do with Spanish food. <laughs> well, and also the you know the the original Cuban is made with mustard. Um, yep. You know, and mustard doesn't um, spoil in a in a heated environment like mayonnaise would. Right. You wouldn't really want to have a, a sandwich in a in a works you know in a lunch sack or lunch pail during the heat of the day either in new orleans or in in uh, tampa bay so um that's why the muffaletta sandwich in new orleans was invented because it it it's made with salted meats ham salami prov- and provolone cheese and mortadella with an olive tapenade no mayonnaise and so you can sit in your lunch pail all day long and it won't it won't spoil. So, uh, Ricky P in studio, Chef Ricky P, uh, talking to some people over the past uh, couple of weeks, um, or I guess really over the last week. And uh, when I brought your name up, I'm like, yeah, we got uh, you know Chef Ricky P coming by the studio. Is that the same uh, same uh, chef uh, Ricky P from St. Petersburg? That whatever happened to his store? <laughs> da, 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 da. And talking to Johnny too, he's like, I can't believe because I lived on Fourth Street, I worked on Fourth Street for years. But I guess I just never got that far south, and Cajun food's never really on my brain. Yeah. So I never, I never yeah. knew of your store when it was there. But people look at me like I just told them I've never seen a Star Wars movie when I tell them that I, I never had gone to your uh, restaurant back when I was there. Well, you know, it was um, it, the whole thing started on Fourth Street at a little sandwich shop that my wife and I decided after um, I told you in the last time we talked that I was in the in the industry in the in the broadcast and advertising industry, and when the economy collapsed in 09 uh we were looking at you know what do we do next and i'd always had in the back of my mind that i was gonna do a new orleans po boy concept because i knew it would work in this area it was missing and so we started this little shop and one thing leads to another it was a very popular seven tables in the whole place you know no place to park if the line was out the door um, makes for the, the perfect little restaurant. Sure, yeah. it make you know it, that's how the legend grows. Yep, yep. You know, so um, we moved into downtown in in 2012 because it was just a, a great opportunity to move into a historic building that looks like New Orleans, high ceilings, archways, gold walls, purple pressed tin ceiling. It was perfect. perfect. And um, and the landlord was anxious to get somebody in there that could make a, make it a go. It used to be Savannah's, and and so it had everything in place. So he made me a, made him off. I couldn't refuse. I had to go and and make a sandwich, you know. And it took off. Five years go by. We're making it on uh, on Central Avenue, and the landlord's the five year lease is up, and it's time for a new lease. Right. Wow. Well, now it's 2017, yeah. and you were part of that group of pe- a lot of people back then, uh, 2010, 11, 12, that came in that helped turn that part of yeah. town around. Yeah, the Edge District. But yep. then you, I was reading in the paper over the last year how you guys were getting screwed left and right because now those landlords are going, good, we have, uh, we've got, um, uh, you know, things are popping around here. It's time for what, what was it double? Did he come back and want double? The Not rent? double, but, but more than, you know, more than we were uh, comfortable as my wife and I looking at it. In addition to the, to the rent going up, the popularity of that area was attracting more and more restaurants. So you've got more restaurants more coming competition. in, slicing the parking pie into smaller pieces you know downtown any downtown has always got parking issues well that part of the edge and that part of central avenue doesn't have high-rise multi-level parking you it's street parking and and it's just limited so we were feeling the the crunch of of the prices going up the cost of business going up and the revenue you know flattening and going down because of the issues that were going on. So well, to well, me chef I remember when it was you and then Ferg's and that was about it. Yeah, and like the little, there was nothing else around there. There was the little Thai place right across the street on the corner of okay. uh, But but it, let's say in the last, you know, 3 years where there was the two three of us six other restaurants have opened up within a block and a half. Wow, oh, wow. And in and that's a sign of of uh, growth. It's a sign of you know we were in the right spot, but it also for the landlords in that area they're going cha ching, right? You know, uh, 
and I don't blame any businessman that yeah. when the market is up and you need to, you know, make more money, how do you make more money as a landlord? Right. You got to raise the rent. So it was just a combination of those things that um, uh, forced our hand, in my opinion, uh, to, to move, move away. And I just told you earlier that I live right over on the, on the north side of St. Petersburg, over in the Gandhi area and, and, and 9th Street. And so the location that uh, we found over there was in a, uh, uh, you know, a, a plaza that had uh, plenty of traffic. It's right there between Gandhi and, and the entrance to, to the I-275. And we thought that that was going to be a very fertile location, and it just didn't turn out that way and uh, if you put up the uh, the television shot there you know we pull up the uh, the rue website we have behind you and i guess yeah. that is a uh, a shot of the dining room well that is actually the um absinthe room that's a private dining room oh. so that if you had a party of it's beautiful uh, oh it's absolutely gorgeous see the press the press uh, tin ceilings yeah. and the and the and the colors are really m muted and, and comfortable but if you wanted to have let's say a uh, anniversary party or a graduation party or any kind of up to 30 people you can have your own room right there that is nice well let's I want to talk about you a little bit Ricky because uh, after having that kind of success um, w what drew you to the to team up with the Dats group versus going hey how about you guys just uh, invest in me while I open up another another store somewhere but you you somewhere along the way went, no 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 you know what this is the group that I want to hook up with right uh, for you know yep. for my future no that's a good question it uh, it was it that was the hard part of uh, for for my wife Lisa and I to, to look at we we knew that we were uh, undercapitalized at that particular point to go forward we either needed to bite the bullet and sell our soul to the devil and get some kind of financing or create partnerships or we could take our game and just move it someplace else, you know, and let someone else take all of the, the uh, chances, the chances and the, and the liability that goes with those chances. So, you know, um, the Perry's that own, uh, Roger and Suzanne Perry, um, have done a phenomenal job. Their, their story is very similar to, to my, my story. They weren't restaurant tours until, uh, uh, 2009 when they opened dats oh I, well they had to be in the restaurant in industry some way right no right. no i don't how, how can you that will go ferg has the same story and ferg it, wasn't i've in never the been in the restaurant business either see so. that that blows my mind because it seems like it's such a complicated business uh of making sure and i didn't realize this until i got behind the scenes of a business fair for a little while and went oh my god i can't believe what goes into you know the ordering just the simple trying to get the right food in keeping it fresh not yep. having to go bad all yep. that kind of yeah but, uh but they you know this it, it, it still comes down to the um to, to to one you know uh single attitude and that is a work ethic that if you're used to working hard and succeeding it doesn't really matter what the game is. You're going to figure out how to play that game and, and win at it. And we did it. We, we started it, you know, with a, a tent at the a Saturday morning market. And once we proved that I could put food together and people would actually pay me to do that, we opened up the po' boy shop. But we started small because we didn't know really if it was going to work or not. And if you fail, you fail small. Right. As, but the Perry's didn't do that. They went big. They went, they went large right off the bat, and uh, they'll be the first to tell you that the learning curve uh, with a restaurant as big as Dats and, and the expenses that go with it, it was fraught with anxiety. Oh, I would imagine. You well, know, I mean, you just walk around Dats, and it's just a, a beautiful on the inside, much like uh, Ricky Pease was, you know, there on Central. I mean, you guys put a lot of effort, money, you know, be, be behind putting together a great, comfortable experience. Well, Roger and Suzanne are, are world travelers, and they are foodies, and they love restaurants, and they love going to restaurants, and so they had this vision that they could create something that was um, world class, and Dats is world class. I mean, the business that goes through the, those doors over there is just remarkable, and the fact that they... Um, you know, part of the whole DATS concept is to, to be on the cutting edge of, the, of, the, of what's happening around the world. And they kind of t turn it into their own thing and have created a niche because you can't really define DATS as a delicatessen, not in the way that, you know, we think of right. New York delis and, you know, ham and cheese and, you know, that kind of, and Rubens and things like that. See, and it's, it's funny that you say that because 
anytime I talk about Dats, like I feel weird calling it Dats Deli. Yeah. Because, because it, to me, it's not a deli. Like it's a great restaurant. Like you said, you can't really pinpoint it as to what type of restaurant it is. But to me, it doesn't feel like a deli. And I don't know what maybe exactly the definition of a deli is. But to me, Dats is much more than that. I agree. I, it, that's that's it exactly. And so, you know, they got they jumped into that and they had a vision and they had um, um, they had the financial wherewithal to to weather the uh, the learning curve. And now it's just a, it's a very successful restaurant. And, and that's what it, it spawned um, uh, the bakery next door dough. And then Rue came ab about in 2014. And now uh, Dr. Barbecue is going to be opening up over in St. Petersburg. Is the, that Ray? Ray? No, no. It's, uh, it's, it's ready to be ready. Uh, they've been ready to be ready for a while now. No, no. Is the, that Ray Lampy? That's Ray. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said, is it ready? Is that Ray? Ray <laughs> is that Ray? Okay. Yeah, Ray Lampy. I, uh, okay, yeah. so that's, that's him? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's funny. Just real quickly, uh, uh, Ray Lampy here in the, out of Clearwater, I want to say. He lives in Clearwater. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm watching one of those cooking uh, competitions one, you know, one night, one day. And they've this one where they got the three judges up there and you're presenting your brisket and you're this and you're that. And he's one of the judges. And I see he's from Clearwater. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, Doc in his, in his little thing is Dr. Barbecue from uh, Clearwater. Well, not even a week later, I'm at Ferg's. And I want to say uh, it was some, you know, there was some playoffs going on or something like that. It was something big going on. And I just look over, and sh there's Ray Lampy sitting right next to me. And I go, Excuse, I'm sorry to bother. Are you Dr. Barbecue? And, uh, yeah, I ended up meeting him that day, and seems like a really nice guy. He's a really – he's a super guy. He's just as he's just as down to earth as anybody you'll ever want to meet. And I can't wait for the restaurant to open because that, to me, is something that St. Petersburg desperately needs is a real authentic, you know, uh, smoky barbecue brisket. You know, the there's kind a of few uh, barbecue joints here in the Bay Area that are on the rise right now as well. Yeah, but it's 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 an underutilized uh, uh, segment of the food industry. I love barbecue. You know, and oh, yeah. they're going to put a tremendous bar in there. there it's it, the location is going to be on the corner of First Avenue South, which is the Tropicana Field is right across the street. Okay. You know, think of Ferg's and go two blocks south okay. towards downtown, and on Eleventh Street which is, you know, uh, there's the roundabout that, that is right there on Central Avenue, and that's the corner. Okay. So they're going to have that whole corner there. So they're, and they're going to put this amazing bar in there um, that the, um, our, our, our manager in charge of bartending uh, in the bar is uh, Morgan, and she's won many, many uh, contests and creative cocktails and craft cocktails. So it's not only going to be great barbecue, it's going to be amazing place to go and have drinks uh, before and after the game i can't wait i always like a place with a good bar oh me too i'm from <laughs> new orleans baby <laughs> well ricky p uh chef ricky p thank you so much for coming by the way oh, it's Talk always show my again. pleasure uh you heading right over to rue now getting into the kitchen we got we got a friday ahead of us and it's fridays are in it, in every restaurant fridays are are the big day so you know in, in our lunch is is developing Every Friday we see it bounce up, and and really you use Friday as your barometer in this business. Because if you, you can't know. get them in there on Friday, you're not getting them in there on a Tuesday. Yeah, if if we can if we can triple on Friday what we did on Tuesday, we're in the we're the the game is happening. It's starting to trend in the right direction. So it's trending in the right direction, and you know we've got a good product out there, and we're. We're anxious to keep it going that way. And have a great person so, behind the product as well. Thank well, you we so much. Well, we should make sure that anybody watching, go ahead and uh, let the chef know that they were watching the show this morning. And, and uh, I'm sure you'll give them a little little extra love, a little extra on the sides. We call, we call that lanyap. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. You know what? You've, have you heard that term before? No. Oh, everybody in, in, in Louisiana knows lanyap. It's L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E is how it's spelled. Huh. And what it means is a little something extra. There you go. It's like a baker's dozen. The 13th donut is lanyap. Lanyap. Nice. So uh, it, like you it. come in and mention that uh, you, you saw the broadcast today. There'll be a little lanyap. Right. Something, yeah. something that rhymes with bread pudding, I think. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in. We'll see okay. you soon. Oh, thank you very much. All right.